for the NIL House, starring Rob Fucker and John Brinkus. Special guests, Cardale Jones and Marcellus Wiley. And now, here's Rob and John. Wow. Wow. I'm going to tell you what. Our band is better than everybody else's band. That is without a doubt. The but Dunwoody Wildcats, the Dunwoody Fighting Wildcats, that's right. are the best high school band around. That's true. They're otherwise known as the NIL house band. That's right. That's right. Now, important to clarify, uh, our first show, tons of buzz in the community. And I heard a lot of people like saying, oh, did you see NIL house? Now listen. I don't want to be an elitist, but it's not NIL House. It's the, the NIL House. It is not University for University of Virginia. It's the university. It's not U for Miami. It's the U. It's not Ohio State. It's the Ohio State. It is. This is the NIL House. It is the NIL House, and it's going to be fun today. And I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm hungry thinking about what we're going to discuss. All right, so let's bring on our first big title card uh, with headlines. So let's get uh, headlines. Rob Vaca, what do so, we got? So I like to talk about things in threes. Yeah, right? You know that. So today, we got three big deals to talk about. Two of them are really tasty. One of them is kind of a guy thing, and we'll get to that. So All right. the tasty part and the threes are we going to talk onions, okay. peanut butter cups, and underwear. Now, if you were to put all three of those into one deal, different kind of show. It different a, website. It would be a different, different whole thing. Different look and feel. <laughs> exactly. And we would not be it's, the co-hosts. We would not be. No. We would not be. No, 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 no. I don't qualify. So what do we got? What's so let's one? talk onions. So okay. what when you think about uh, a burger and you've made a lot of burgers in your day and you've made me a lot of burgers yes i have. can you can you tell the audience do you know what my favorite topping is for a burger onions it's onions onions it's onions i know it is and it's sweet onions it's, sweet. it's gotta be sweet onions georgia's sweet onions it's gotta be georgia sweet onions so right down the road in Athens, right. where the national champion Bulldogs reside, yeah. their quarterback, Stetson Bennett, just did a deal with Schumann Farms. And guess what Schumann Farms produces? I'm just Take guessing. A guess. Wait, wait, wait. Top of my head, sweet onion sweet rings. Sweet onions. Sweet and onion, onion rings. rings. Onion rings. Yes. Okay. So let's, Herbert, let's look at what, what Schumann Farms and Stetson Bennett just did. Let's, let's roll this clip. Let's see. Put us on, let's see this. This is under our rockin' deals thing. It is a rockin' deal. It is a rockin' deal. Uh, I think we're queuing up the video, we are, yes. Here it goes. <laughs> okay, and roll! And, here it is. All right. That's when you're up good. in Georgia, there's just something special about Saturdays in the fall. Get the all black. And no one now knows that better than Schumann Farms. For two generations, Nothing Schumann, Schumann Farms, Farms has grown the world's sweetest onions right in the heart of Southeast Georgia. Their dedication to being a family business, is giving back to their community, them? and producing He's a product well. they're proud to share but is why I'm proud to be on their team. Hey, Stet, That's right. you want any more rings? Maybe just one more. Schumann Farms, growing the world's sweetest onions. You can go raw, you can go, go. fried, you can go any way you want with those onions because they're sweet onions. And what stuck out to me is well, Stetson was unafraid to go in and grab a full handful of raw onion bare-fisted. Bare-fisted, just, just right. Right before the game, note it. I mean, he was tailgating. That was not just a picnic, right? It was right before the game. He's tailgating with the good people. He was tailgating before the game. That's right. With the great unwashed. That's fine. He's not above it. So here's what I want to want to point out. Was that like a million dollar transaction? It's priceless. I, mean, I don't. What I, is it? It is a priceless transaction. And, and here's what I can't get over. Right. I love onions, but I'm very particular mm -hmm. about how I touch my onions. I cannot grab. I, hold on, that sentence may have never been uttered by anyone 
ever. I am very particular about how I touch my onions. I could onions lose. is not a substitute usually for something else, but in this case, it may be. Don't worry. I am going to petition to keep my man card <laughs> after that statement. But I will say this. I am very particular because... <laughs> Have, have you ever grabbed a raw onion? You, your hands smell into perpetuity. So uh, to <laughs> grab a handful, it, and, he, and he treated it like a shovel. He stuck his hand underneath, he grabbed a handful of raw onions, yes. and then he very uh, unassumingly yes. placed okay. a platter full of onion on his burger. And do you know what else he was putting on his plate? Money. Yes. Onions equal money. There's no crying over those onions. He's, ma <laughs> he's no making coin. That's right. And if his hands, as you said, now smell into perpetuity, so does his bank account. Because NIL is for real, and onion rings are worth a lot of money. So the point is, there are athletes having fun with it, right? Yeah. And what more fun than sweet onions? And now, right. shifting gears to yeah. more food, yeah. yep. like I, ha I have it here. I brought you a gift. Go on. What do you I got? have a Reese's pumpkin. Shaped peanut butter cup for you. And I have All one right. for me. And frankly, I got to be honest, after watching yeah. the onions, I'm hungry. So I'm just, I'm going to eat this and, while and we're speaking. God, you know what? I would say that Reese's is paying you to do this, but I know they are not. They're not. <laughs> not yet. So, free not love yet. for Reese's. Now, yeah. Herbert, let's look at my laptop. Gone. Reese's just did what they call the tastiest deal in NIL history. Now, wow. I right. think it's debatable because the sweet onions are pretty tasty. Mm -hmm. But Reese's just identified 10, 12 players, mm -hmm. and guess what they identified the 12 players based on? Size. Their last name. What? What do, th what do you think their last name is? Reese's. Reese's. What? Reese's. So the 12 players are Andrew, yeah. Brody, Cameron, yeah. Courtney, David, James, John, Otis, Max, Michael, Quentin, and Richard. Reese. Reese. If your name ends with Reese, if your last name is Reese, you're in on the deal by default. It's, well, wait, is it Reese or Reese says? Reese. 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 But All of these called, guys. It's not called the Reese peanut butter cup. It's Reese says. I know, but the Reese guys, there's no people that have names named Reese's. I don't You're know if Reese. that's true. I think I bet somebody has Herbert, the last do name that Reese's. research and right. come back to us. Megan, so, so look listen. up if there's any human being in the world with the last name of Reese's, not with without the apostrophe. R E E S E S. It's <laughs> so Reese's. R E E S E S. So right. that would be the last name. But okay. Well, wait. But but before we go on with that, so I like the tastiest deal. Not that I want to give. Uh, Sports science, too much credit. But Herbert, go to my phone. Check this out. Who do you think this is? Uh, that's Beast Mode pouring Skittles into his mouth. Pre-deal that he ended up making with Skittles. So are you saying, is are you saying, John, oh. that this could be a precursor uh, to a relationship with Reese's for the NIL house? It, is that possible? If it isn't, I don't know why we're doing this segment. Well, I was hungry. <laughs> I, oh, I don't know why we're doing this segment. Because we did, listen, we brought Marshawn Lynch into the sports science lab. We had him pour uh, Skittles over his face to prove that Skittles increased your blood sugar. Duh. And blood sugar makes you gives you a little more energy. It also makes you crash afterwards. But at halftime, Marshawn would down Skittles. And guess what? He made a giant deal with Skittles. So now that we have pointed out the rhesus Deal, let's see what happens with the good people from Reese's. I like Skittles and Reese's. And, and what I just noticed is that our whole color scheme is Reese's sort of orange and, and black. It really is. So yeah. I don't know if we planned that. Hey, did we? our producers may have planned that. I'm not sure. That's right. But here's what I want to say about the Reese's deal in Go wrapping on. up. I am envious because what the players that are participating get mm -hmm. is they get a significant supply of Reese's football peanut butter cups, right. which is valuable to me. Valuable to you. But more valuable is they each get a Reese's chain, a gold Reese's chain and pendant to wear with their travel blaze orange blazer. That's You know I love a good blazer, a sport <laughs> coat. You do. And Reese's is creating a custom travel blaze orange sport jacket. You get 
for the players. You come off the bus, you got on an orange Reese's blazer with big old like are we are we talking like like turnover chain are we ta- but are we talking like mr t yes are we, like turnover you, chain like gold you got it's got to be blingy like big you're not going to get blingy? a tiny little necklace pendant you want wow. you want to brand it you want to advertise it all right well so we, kudos to kudos to to reese's kudos to schumann farms third one up is at south carolina here's the underwear deal. Now, here's well, what's interesting go, about go, the underwear. Go, go to Rob's computer. Which is this? What is this one? Let me see. Saks Underwear yeah. is supplying the entire South Carolina football team with underwear. What? And they're calling attention. Hey, go to the headline. Not only to their underwear, but they're calling to attention to testicular cancer. And the players are donating $5,000 to a cause that benefits those with testicular cancer. So. This is really interesting as a cancer survivor myself and an avid underwear wearer. Frequently, I mean, not all I the time. I frequently, yes, I'm a frequent underwear yeah. wearer. This is really interesting. South Carolina down in Columbia, just down the road, right. all players will be outfitted with Saks underwear. Good for them. I. You want to know what's amazing? I mean, seriously, I've never heard of Saks underwear. Well, now you have. Now I have, and you get the everyone correlations. Else has. I know, and that's the, so, but this is kind of the point. So you have Reese's, everybody's heard of Reese's, but then I get Saks underwear. Now, maybe I'm just not an underwear connoisseur, but I've never heard of Saks underwear, but now I have. And now everybody who watches this show will know about Saks underwear. Yes. It's like buying Super Bowl ad time. You're not really buying the ad time, so people watch it during the Super Bowl, although they do. But you get all of the press before the game, after the game. You get people voting on the best deal. And we're doing the same thing. We're we picking are. out Saks Underwear. Saks Underwear is getting free publicity all over the place by the mere fact that they did the deal. They are. And Herbert, if you go to my laptop again, I'm going to read word for word the statement from Saks CEO Wendy Venison yep. about the deal. Now. I think we all know that the nickname of the South Carolina University is the Gamecocks. The Gamecocks. Right? I'm going to read Wendy's statement. Go on. The Gamecocks were the perfect match, said Wendy Benison. We're excited not only to secure their balls, but also support philanthropic initiatives around testicular cancer, which is especially close to home for Sachs. So there's a lot there. I, I like Shandy. There's a lot there. I like that. We need to get her on the show. Wendy Benison. Oh, wait, maybe. Wendy? Wait, Wendy. What did I say? Where did I come well, up said with Sandy? Well, you said Sandy. Where did I come I up with I don't know. Sandy? There may be a Sandy that works for the company. If there is, <laughs> we'll know. get Sandy on too. Well, we get, we'll get Sandy and Wendy from Saks coming on, talking about securing balls and uh, curing testicular cancer. Now listen, kudos to them for the combination, the sort of kitschy, clever, double entendre press release with a genuine charitable cause. And they're getting a lot of press. Kudos to them. They are. Let's move on to our next segment, our next card, yep. and that's Top Paid Athletes. Top Paid Athletes. All right, uh, here we go. Fly in our graphics card for uh, Top Paid Athletes. Um, and what do we got? So last week we had a great twin duo mm-hmm. guest mm-hmm. guests the, the, the Cavender Cavender twins. twins right amazing they're awesome they're amazing and they're in the top list for the female athletes according to on three nil so herbert right. let's pull up our our list of top female athletes as it relates to valuation and the Cavender pull. twins are in the mix they're crushing pull. it let's pull up that cat let's see two minutes that what do we got well you have livy dunn Who's yep. the gymnast at LSU? Right. You have another gymnast who's an Olympian, Sunisa Lee. Then you have Paige, who is the hoopster. Yep. And then you have the Cavender twins. So really, at the top, the top five, right, are the gymnasts and the hoopsters. Now, are the Cavender twins? This is the question I had last week that I didn't ask. They occupy the four and five slot. If you combine the four and five slot, does that make them collectively as a unit number one? I don't because know. Let's go, let's go back to out. the graphic. I think so. I think so. Put them back up. Put it back up. Like add it up. I can't. My my eyes are. Uh, no. The the answer is no. Livy Livy Dunn still has still has two still million plus. Right. 
as her valuation according to On3 NIL. But I would say this, there is no adding up. Those ladies are standing on their own. They're their own fire plugs, they're their own brands, they're their own uh, different personalities, and they're a lot of fun. Now, here is something that I want to make an observation about. There are a lot of, and let's just call them male sports snobs, who say, yeah, of course football gets all the you know, scholarship money, and because female athletes don't generate any revenue for the university. Well, here you have these young ladies putting themselves out to the open market, and they're crushing it. Like, they are well, crushing. hold on, if they're not generating money for the university, and they're going out as individuals and just totally slaying it, there's a little bit of a disconnect. Why is the university not capitalizing on female sports more? They're just not putting the right resources behind it. These young ladies have amazing social media followings, incredible engagement, engagement, and I think most importantly, what you're seeing, and I'm just gonna say this is a blanket statement, I think female athletes today, right now, register with the general audience as authentic. I think, I think they you're are right. their own entrepreneurial just ballers. And they're not, they're doing it for the love of the game by and large, but they're also going out there and they're saying, this is me, I am a brand. And they understand that better than, I would say, than the typical young man in uh, at, at the university level, because I think they're wrapped up in being superstars in their own sports. They're getting, it's, you know, they've got tens of thousands of people watching them. They're generating lots of money for the university. The women, I, I'm telling you, when you say, hey, we're gonna, we marginalize you, we put you off to the side, not as many people go to your games, we're not publicizing as much, that puts a chip on their shoulder and they're crushing it. They Absolutely are crushing. crushing it. They are crushing it. And, and you gotta remember, we're really in the first inning of this thing. It's a year old. Yeah. NIL's a year old. And, if you, if you go to my uh, computer, my laptop again, Herbert, here's another story that makes me think back to a couple years ago when every day I would look at my uh, right. my 401k or my stock portfolio sure. and it was rising every yeah. day. Now that's not happening right now. Right. But what is happening is that NIL is rising every day. This is a freshman at Ole Miss. Now Ole Miss had a big win against Kentucky this past weekend, right? I think you watched some of that game. His valuation, in the last 14 weeks is up 909%. What? But if what? you look at him, Quinshawn Judkins, he's a freshman running back. Wait, wait, what is this? For, wait, 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 hold on. 900? 900, 909%? What? Now, For what? I would love to be up 909% at anything. Why? And this is showing that his valuation, according to on three NIL, is $373,000. He's a freshman at Ole Miss. So my point in sharing this particular story is NIL is up and to the right. It's rising. We're in the maybe the second inning now, yeah. and some people are starting to explode onto the scene. The most authentic, the most, most authentic ambassadors for brands are collegiate athletes, probably. You know, particularly, I don't know who said that? particularly for local brands. Do you want to know who actually said that? Jason Belzer. Jason Belzer with Probably. student athlete NIL. Samil did say that, and he he's in the thick it. of it. So he is. I trust what he says on that. Yeah, I think it, I think it's amazing. Um, all right, listen, we're gonna keep things moving uh, right along uh, with our first interview for this show. First, we're guess. gonna be bringing on Cardale Jones in a moment. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted to stop and I wanted to show everybody this. I don't know how close we can get on this. Go to, go to, go to my single, Herbert. Check this out. Are you strong enough to lift that? I am. But look at yeah. this. These are actual bourbon barrel heads made by Matt Kahn at Kahn Creations. Look at this. First of all, our logo is totally badass. Pretty B.A. Itself, right? Pretty B.A. And look at this. These are bourbon bourbon. Barrel heads, totally authentic, laser engraved. They're absolutely amazing. A lot more swag like this for. Uh, can I have? Can, can, can I, can I have my own? Can I have my own logo made on 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 Khan's Of barrel? course you can. That's yes, awesome. he does it custom. And check out this shirt. Check out this shirt. These are coming soon. So we have this amazing logo. Um, Love the silver on the black. I think the silver on the black is totally badass. And look at this. Look at this. It's like in my cup. It's pretty cool. So uh, go to Con Creations, 
and uh, he does custom stuff for everybody. Uh, but he's also doing it for How the do I NIL. spell Connors? K O N N. K O N N. K O N N. All right, let's uh, let's go to our little uh, full screen wipe. Let's cue up the band first. Cue them up, and let's bring on Cardale Jones. V, we're uh, keeping the NIL house bus just moving right along. We've got our next guest. Who's this? Who is it? It's a legendary and epic name in college football lore. Yeah. It's Cardale Jones from the Ohio State University. Cardale Jones! Bring him on! <laughs> Let's see him. There he is. Hey, hey what's man. up, guys? <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, Cardale, I haven't seen you in a while, you were on Sports Science uh, a few years back. How have you been? It's exciting, man. You, your life has changed so much. Good, man. Of course, my life has changed so much since my time at Ohio State. And we met back in, I want to say, 17 on Sports Science uh, out at you guys' studio, which was a huge accomplishment for me because I was such a big fan of the show growing up and watching it and all the cool things that you guys were able to uh, compare the different athletes' attributes to when it came to animals, when it came to anything you can think of. So other than that, man, just indulging in this new world of NIL here in Ohio, the ever-changing uh, landscape of college athletics. Now, before we get to uh, your work with the foundation, I wanted to just uh, tell you a quick story. And I don't even know if you remember this. And you guys won the national championship in 2014. You come walking off the field as a, in terms of sports figures, a relatively unknown figure at that point, but you just won the national championship. And I was backstage just as you were walking off the field. You and I made eye contact and I'll, I will never forget it. You were walking and you like literally looked at me and you were, and you said, what's up, man? And I'm like, that guy knows that he has the world in his hand at this moment. <laughs> You went from just be, you were a you know you're a newbie at the Ohio State and now you're this international quarterback icon winning the national championship. What was that moment like? Well, that individual moment was so surreal for me because it all happened so fast. I mean, for those who don't know my story, how I burst on the scene of college athletics is because our last game of the season, our quarterback got injured, had an opportunity to start my first college game in our conference playoff. I mean, my conference championship game versus Wisconsin. We win. It was the first year of the college football playoffs, so now I'm getting ready to put a number one team in the country. Uh, hence, I got the jersey that I wore in the background here versus Alabama. And then the championship game, national championship game, I think it was six or seven days right after. So everything happened so fast at that point for me. It was still hard to process it. You know, so I didn't know what happened until so we got into spring ball, getting ready for next season. Like, Jesus, man, we really just won a national championship game as we're getting ready to try to do it again. So this is the topic, Cardell, that can apply to NIL, it can apply to young athletes in school, it can apply to young athletes playing high school football, playing college football, and that is preparation, readiness, and mindset. If you weren't ready, if you weren't prepared, if you didn't have the right mindset, you get thrust into the Buckeye Nation because of an injury, and it could have gone the complete other way. You could have you could have been played the fool, right, if you weren't ready. Tell us about preparation and what that means to success in anything you're doing. Yeah, I mean, you said it. I mean, I think my biggest fear is um, is letting someone down, letting the people that I know that's counting on me down. And at that point, it's my teammates. Our coaching staff did an unbelievable job when I was at Ohio State. Uh, coach Meyer, Coach Herman, who was the quarterback coach and coordinator at the time, um, of making sure we had that next guy up mentality, making sure all the backups, making sure everybody stayed engaged in practices. So when we used to do good on good practices, what we used to call winner or loser day, you know, they would yell out, hey, the left tackle shoestring broke, equipment uh, check, he got to come out for a play, just to make sure his backup, or just to make sure one of the backups is paying attention, you know, 24 seven, and you never know when your time is, is going to come, right? And then another thing about that, they preach the mental and physical reps. 
clearly the backups aren't getting as many physical reps as the mental reps, but you know, it's times where the quarterback is going, whoever it may be at that time, and I'm four or five yards behind them, going through that same footwork, going through that same visual rep, and our coach used to coach us up on those type of things because he knows and just not enough reps to go around. So we had to find ways and opportunities to stay sharp and stay ready for the opportunity whenever it presents itself. We're talking about being ready for when the opportunity presents itself. So NIL now comes along and there are all these different collectives that are popping up and they all kind of have their own business model or mission statement. You are a founding member for the foundation. What is the mission statement for the found state, the foundation and how have you become so entrenched in this new NIL space? I think I have to start back where when it came when it comes to our agency first. So outside of the foundation, I started an agency where we represent student athletes and help them take advantage of the name, image and likeness opportunities that are out there, making sure they're not being taken advantage of and really educating them on the on the fact of building a brand that you are the brand that's going to help or harm that brand, what you do on and off the field. So starting there, and then as we start to see other collectives formed around the country that's doing things that's specifically benefiting a, a university or a football or basketball program, that's where my, me and myself and my partner, uh, Brian Schottenstein, started coming with the idea of doing something like that for the Ohio State football and basketball program. And one day getting to the point where we're supporting more than one program. I mean, Ohio State has I think 36 or 38 sports that I can't even name 36 or 38 sports, but we want to help and um, eventually help and provide opportunities for uh, all of them, you know, making continue to make Ohio State one of the best universities to go to, not just outside of academics part of what they have to offer, but athletics as well. And the way we do it, we help these guys invest their name, image and likeness. And we have charitable partners that we work closely with that our players are already super charitable. And I think uh, one thing I got to give Ohio State credit for, they do an unbelievable job of getting their student athletes involved in the communities and, and around the people who support them, you know, yelling their names on Saturdays, day in and day out and supporting these guys long after their days are over playing Ohio State. So impact, Cardale, is clearly important to your players. It's clearly important to you and Brian and the foundation and uh, coming from the top, from the university, the administration, and the football program. What are some of the causes or charities and what are some of the things that your athletes are doing in the community? So right now, the foundation was, uh, I want to say, we've been around about three to four months now and I think we had an unbelievable impact in such a short period of time. Um, so uh, one of our charitable partners is the Buckeye Crews for Cancer, who clearly does with a lot of things with cancer research. Um, another one is Lifetime, which is an organization that uh, bring in underprivileged children with uh, special needs to teach them how to they should be uh, treated in the real world. Lifetime is an unbelievable facility where they bring these kids in and they have a doctor there. They have a facility there where, you know, it, it serves as a deli. They have a movie theater there. So all of these real life aspects in this one facility, and they take their time to teach these kids and show them how they should be treated in the real world. And then our other charitable partner for now is a kid again who takes, it's almost like make a wish. They, they take kids with terminal illness and, and bring their uh, families in and provide them with opportunities and, and experiences of a lifetime. Um, and then the way we get our student athletes involved with them, pretty much identify them through our criteria of whether it's the foundation, you know, clearly their performance um, in the classrooms, um, their performance already in the community, and then um, just being a part of the football and basketball program. And then we identify these guys and then, you know, we, we offer them opportunities to get involved with one of our charitable partners. And, you know, our charitable partners will continue to grow because we want to give our, our student athletes an uh, opportunity to get involved with them and, and is a, a genuine cause. We're not going to force someone to get involved with cancer research when they don't have a, a true uh, a, a passion for it or, uh, or um, a feel for it, you know. So that's the most exciting thing about it. It's going to keep growing. And uh, I think we've been doing some great things in such a short period of time. And I'm excited for the future of the foundation. I, I love the fact that, I mean, look, you're still a young man. And you know, you burst onto the scene unlike any athlete in history, literally. I mean, you're playing the starting quarterback in the first national championship game. Um, 
you know, against the number one team and you, you just have this incredible story. But now that NIL has come along, you could have chosen to do anything. And the fact that you chose the lane um, to really teach kids, look, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. No matter, you're a student athlete and that's high profile, whether or not it's football or softball or any of the, the sports in between. And the fact that service, the fact that giving back is at the forefront of your mind, I mean, you are really, I mean, not only did you, you know, can you talk the talk, but you are walking the walk. Yeah, I appreciate it. And like I said before, man, we're, we're just fortunate enough to be um, athletes at, a, at an unbelievable university where their resources are limitless, you know? Um, Getting these, I mean, we all know clearly, you know, we go to these top universities and all of us are going to the NFL, all of us are going to the NBA and we're going to play for 10 plus years, right? But still, if that dude goes, if that still goes as planned, what are you going to do after that? And then I think the foundation and my, also my agency, 10 Talents, give our athletes the opportunity to indulge and get engaged into the business, um, the business world of Columbus, Ohio in such an early period of time now. Clearly this wasn't around when I was in school. So after that 10 plus career, after that, whenever that last snap there, whenever you're taking that last shot at your college athletics, you can potentially walk right into these opportunities where you already built a great relationship with these Fortune 500 companies, that you already built these great relationships with these um, the CEOs of the, uh, or these creators of these nonprofits that we're working with. That's the ultimate goal I know for me personally, when it comes to 10 talents and the players we represent is literally Whenever that day is done for them, their plan days, walking into real opportunities to continue to grow within the business community. That's such a great point, and, and you're right. Columbus is really a mecca for business, for Fortune 500 business, businesses, and what a great opportunity for athletes, as John said, in these 30 plus sports to get introduced to opportunities early to start learning, to start being mentored, to start making an impact. So when you think about a life cycle, three, four months, you're just, y'all are just a baby, right? You're barely scratching the surface. Where do you see your agency and the foundation going in the next few years? Well, two separate entities, what I talk about. So yes. my agency, Ben Talents, we've been around for a year now, actually. And then the foundation that just benefit the student athletes of a football and basketball team right now for Ohio State, we're the three month year old, three month uh, baby right now. But as uh, far as with 10 Talents, I think our, our potential and our goals is limitless when it comes to the vision of a company, an agency, and what we can do for our student athletes. As NIL continue to evolve, our mission, our views, our approach continue to evolve for the more things we allow to do and help out with our student athletes. So I'm extremely excited about 10 Talents because we represent players, not just Ohio State, Ohio State, we got some Penn State players, we have players at Cincinnati, and we also, I think one of the coolest things about this as well, we wanted a few agencies out there when it comes to NIL aspect that represent uh, female athletes as well. Because I mean, their name, image, and likeness is just as much, um, you know, important to us as our male athletes, and we love to help them with opportunities and and go out and, and actively seek those things that they're interested in. Because there's a lot of great characteristics they have to offer a big time company as well. Well, Cardale, listen, before we let you go, I, first of all, I can't thank you enough for just being an awesome human being. On, I mean, you're on <laughs> one of the biggest stage, stages that you could possibly be in athletics, and you have chosen an incredible path to influence people uh, in such a positive way. What's one thing that you want student athletes watching this show right now to take away? Um, I think the, the one thing is that, um, you know, the brand that you building right now as a student athlete on and off the field can set you up for the rest of your life. And I think um, I don't want no student athlete, no matter what sport, no matter what gender, no matter what stage they're in, what a backup starter to really uh, not understand the position they're in to not just make an impact for other people, but clearly for themselves as well. So I think you know, the, the biggest thing that I see from student athletes now and working in the NIL world and, you know, I would never picture myself working for 18 to 22 year olds, like literally, 
right? Um, but I think the biggest thing that I see right now with some of the athletes is that, you know, they kind of sit back and say, let me let these opportunities come to me instead of going out there and actively seeking those things and understanding they have a lot more to offer if they're coming to their you know, personality when it comes to their social media presence or if they're coming to what they're doing on the uh, athletic arenas. Awesome. Well, Cardell Jones, thank you so much for joining us on the NIL House and everybody watching and listening, please support the foundation. Please support your uh, local student athletes. Uh, this NIL space is just beginning and I think there's a lot of great things to come. And thank you so much for joining us, Cardell. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Wow. I mean, that was Cardell Jones. Wow. Uh, that was Cardell Jones. That was Cardell Jones. He was, uh, he was awesome. Yeah. He was, uh, look, Cardell Jones, I, I know that we, were, we talked about it quite a bit uh, in the interview, but man, I cannot imagine going from, I mean, basic obscurity. I mean, you're, you're a fringe athlete, you're third string on the Ohio State, and then you're like this in international super. I mean, just hard to, hard to imagine how you handle that. And he's handled it incredibly well, and he's, and he's parlaying it into a massive business. Well, what a life lesson yeah. for, for anyone who wants to be great at their job, at yeah. school, as a parent, as a brother, as a sister, as an athlete. It's readiness. It's being prepared. Yeah. It's having the mindset that my name, my number may get called. I may need to perform. A lot of people are just not ready. Yeah, and it's true. he was ready. It's a great lesson. It, it, it really is. All right, we're moving on to, uh, let's bring in our graphic. Watch this, we feel like a, a real show here. Whoosh, inside scoop. What are we talking about? Rob we're Bob. talking about collectives and it's a hot topic. Mm -hmm. Every major college uh, athletic program has an unaffiliated collective right. or collectives, more than one. Right. And there are some that are stepping up to do a few things. Number one, engage their alumni base and fans right. with interesting programming and content. Number two, feature and tell stories about their athletes yep. and the good works that they're doing. Yep. And three, promote brands that are doing these deals with their athletes. And it's hard for collectives to do all of that right. because that's not in their DNA. That's not their core business. Yeah. And so how do you do that? Well, tell us. Well, you know, I, first one out of the gate is really Penn State. And Penn State's uh, collective success with honor is doing a show. Yes, they're doing it with Brinks TV. And it's a platform that you and I have built that is a broadcast platform is watching it. You're probably watching the NIL house right now on Brinks TV or some social media channel, but we're able to deliver top notch programming with interactivity. Therefore you have community, you have um, commerce, and you also just have the commitment from the actual athlete to really grow. So you have content, Commerce, community, commitment, a lot of season there. Um, and success with honor is out of the gate first. And it's awesome. Yeah, Jason Belzer and uh, Sunil have done a great job with success with honor in, in helping them grow their, uh, their footprint. And so how are we helping other collectives, right? You'll see Rising Spear, which is tied to the Florida State yep. uh, world come alive with their own show and program. And ultimately it's how do you engage your subscribers, right? Because right. a lot of these collectives have subscribers. They're trying to grow their subscriber base and give them value. How do you give them value? Well, you give them content that nobody else can get. You give them access to limited edition merch and memorabilia that no one else can get. You give them auctions, you give them gamification. You engage them, yep. and that's exactly what Brinks TV is doing with and for these collectors. All right, so there are going to be a lot more universities who are stepping up. It's really the, the the bigger collectives who really, for lack of a lack of a better phrase, have their act together, right? You know, they're they have a uh, solid uh, foundation. They have a solid donor base. They have a mission statement. They have a genuine message that they want to get across. And they realize 
as an organization, they can't do it all. So the partnering up, Brinks TV delivers a product that allows them to really deliver on the promise of propping up the student athlete. These student athletes have an on-ramp to a media career, to media exposure. They're doing something with the collective that helps them raise money, get brand deals uh, that are brought in, increase subscriptions, uh, and also just engagement with the community at large. So, I mean, we're thrilled, obviously, to be working with Success With Honor, and there are a lot more. Yeah, it's fun stuff, and we're happy. Our mission, right? Our mission has always been, throughout yep. our lives, throughout our different uh, endeavors and ventures, has been to expose the greatness in athletes, expose yep. the potential for athletes, and now we're doing that with student athletes. So, shifting gears as we wrap up our Inside Scoop segment, why don't you share for the, the listeners and the watchers what our show here, The NIL House, did this past week with the one and only LeVar Arrington. You know, here's what's interesting, is I have always had the philosophy, if you're gonna be something, be it, be distinctive. And, you know, sports science, which I'm best known for, is something that was very distinctive, it continues to be distinctive, doesn't have any major competitors because it did something really, really well. And it was hard to outdo it. The NIL house is the same thing. We're executing at the highest level. We're getting the best guests. We have the best breaking stories. We have the best production value. We have the best host. I mean, Rob Vaca, how the hell did we lock up Rob Vaca? I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing, but... Sweet onions and Reese's peanut butter cups. Exactly. Uh, and what's interesting is that because the content is compelling, we were able to make a deal with the great LeVar Arrington, and LeVar's brand, Up On Game, uh, is crushing it over on Fox Sports and iHeartRadio, and they have an entire channel, uh, content channel with tons of programming on it, and we partnered up with LeVar and we, all of the audio feeds for the NIL house are going through Up On Game uh, with LeVar and team. And all of Up On Game's programming is coming over to Brinks TV. And it's gonna be a visual presentation that's as good if not better than anything else that's out there, including things on ESPN and all the other giant networks. And we're also able to mix in interactivity with retail and auctions and NFTs. And we're really honored to, to be able to partner up. And the, the, the way that things come full circle is you and I have been running around in the sports circles forever, you know, for our entire careers. And you just meet people who are cut from the same cloth as you. They're, you know, honorable people, they're honest, they're hardworking. They have a vision, and I, you know, as a, uh, I grew up a Washington Redskins fan, Ooh. and I want. Listen, we have three Super Bowls. You do. Listen, you do. Three Hogs, Super Bowls. Hogs era Super Bowls continue. They are now. Lavar came after that era, but Lavar was a Washington Redskin, and here I am, like, oh my God, this guy is absolutely amazing. And then you have sports science come along, and we're all, we're at all these events, and Lavar is there, and you're like, oh my God, Lavar Arrington. As, as much as he dominated on the field, he is dominating even more off the field. Super, super bright guy. Has a total vision of where he wants to take up on game and we're thrilled to team up with him to help him execute. So cheers to LeVar, Dustin, Handis, Blanco, and their crew. That's right. We're looking forward to a long and fortuitous relationship. And that leads us to our next iconic guest. Yes. And he is a sports icon. And that is none other than Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Marcellus Wiley is coming on the show. God, I love Marcellus God, Wiley. God love Marcellus Wiley. Here's why I love Marcellus. You want to talk about authentic? With a big A. Big A. Ivy League grad uh, playing in the NFL. Cue up the band. Let's uh, make sure we bring on Marcellus right away.
All right, bring on the big man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Marcellus Wiley. Man, <laughs> What's up, look brother? at you. How are you there doing? He oh, he's man, got, he's got that million dollar brother. smile. Never shut up. Perfect in blue. I oh, love man. that. Uh, Marcellus, so we're talking about everything NIL here on the NIL house. It's not NIL house, it's the Ohio State, the U, it's the NIL house. <laughs> Uh, tell me, let the jealousy just just gush because you missed out. Yeah, this is an opportunity of a lifetime for so many athletes as uh, when you're going on this journey, we all know the pyramid of success. And most of the room and most of the athletes are at the bottom. And to climb that pyramid, two things you have to understand. One going to get harder and harder because of the atmospheric pressure. Hey, every level it gets more difficult, but also there's less room, right? <laughs> so you get to the NFL and there's 1800 guys, but there are more than 1800 good or great football players walking this planet. Then you get to the collegiate ranks. We know the high school ranks over a million or so high school football players. But what about those guys from the 1 million to the 1800 who find themselves on the outside looking in. Well, the NIL deals certainly give them a greater cushion to land on in case they don't make it to the top level. And for a guy like me, John, oh my God, I would have made a killing. And it's not because I was a five-star recruit. It was not because I was the biggest name in the, in the draft or in recruitment. It was simply because I leveraged big schools against Columbia, big schools against the Ivy League. And if you know the endowment of Ivy League schools, I would have made a killing if this <laughs> were around when I was out there playing around with the letter of intent. Total. So let's put up on the screen the top 10 female athletes right now as evaluated by On3 NIL. Marcellus, earlier in the show, we talked about our friends, the Cavender Twins. These young ladies are, are guards at University of Miami. They're crushing it. They're valued at about a million eight, million seven together. Where would you have fallen on the scale of value while you were at Columbia? Oh my God, um, you have to have another full screen graphic and it was just said Marcellus Wally, Marcellus Wally, Marcellus Wally. I'm not lying to y'all, bro. Y'all think I'm over I, here trying to, I, trying to brag. So I don't doubt you at all. Money is in the Ivies, baby. Let's start, let's start here. When I was, when I was a senior and no one had been drafted to the NFL in a decade or so, everyone was telling me. And I was looking around and they were trying to say that in a way that was going to defeat me. Like, good luck, Marcel. So I don't care how great you are, it's not happening. And then I came across a statistic that gave me power and encouragement, even if I didn't get drafted. It was this. There were three players that were active from the Ivy League and the NFL at that time, but six owners. And I said, wait a minute. So we have six billionaires in the NFL, but only three millionaire players. So who's going to win this game of life once I make it to the next level? Now, if I could leverage those bank accounts when I'm in college and they're screaming, Columbia's 8-2, they're like, Marcellus is our MVP, All-American. He's the best thing since sliced bread. I would have told him to slice some of that bread. I would have been that whole damn full screen. Wiley, wiley, wiley. It, it, it's a real game changer uh, for athletes. Now, here's what I think happens. I think if we were to extrapolate out, you know you're saying, oh man, I would have made a killing. It would have been amazing. And we know that somebody like Johnny Manziel, right? Johnny Football, he would have just, I mean, there's no way he would have gone to the NFL as early as he did because he's like, dude, I'm raking it in and I'm making a ton of money in at Texas A&M. I think there will be very soon the athlete who's able to capitalize on NIL to such a degree that the next level up isn't as attractive as it used to be. 
Wow, you are fast forwarding. And I understand where you're going. I just don't think we'll get there. Um, wow, the hold thing, on, you're saying no way. No way, no way. The, the only thing oh. I like, only thing I like more than my favorite thing is more of my favorite thing. So if it's money, <laughs> if, if it's attention, if it's to play ball, if it's the girls, if it's the frat party so I can walk in as the king on the throne, whatever you're going to say, the NFL will present that package and it will have an ER at the end. Oh, it was great at AM. It will be great turf in the NFL. Oh, I had fun. It will be funner in the NFL. Like, <laughs> whatever you're going to say. I don't give a damn if you made $5 billion in NIL funds. The NFL at that time will say, well, here's another $5 billion just for your rookie deal. Point being, I don't ever see us landing in a place where the highest level isn't still the level you want to achieve. All right. You're probably right. And but John has a point. Do you guys know how old Chris Wanky was when he won the Heisman Trophy? No. 327 years old. Now, I don't know. He looked old as hell. We knew he was in decline as soon as he got to the league because he was already too damn old. <laughs> well, you're close as hell. He was 28, 28. when he won the Heisman. Chris Wanky was 28. Now, do you guys know how old Sean Clifford, the quarterback for Penn State, is? No. He's 24. So here's my point. Johnny Manziel would have been 24 playing quarterback. He wouldn't have been mm -hmm. 21 going to the league. And you might have been 24 at Columbia sticking around with a COVID year and a medical red shirt and yep. transfer portal. So here's the deal in particular for the Ivy Leagues. And Marcellus, man, you got to chop this up. Harvard alone has 29 billionaires that have come out of there. There is not a collective system established yet at Ivy Leagues. So the Ivy League athletes are not making the kind of NIL deal money that somebody at a Power Five or a Group of Five or even a D2 school is making. And as you know, there's no athletic scholarships in the Ivy Leagues. So how do the Ivies come together with all that cashola and attract more players? Oh, great question. And it's something that frustrated me when I went to Columbia, when I was in the Ivy League, is that they actually perceive themselves as substandard to other major college football players. Now, I understand why they did it, because look, there's 12,000 people at our games. You turn on TV and watch a and and there's 90, 100,000, I get it. But you gotta understand, this is a means to an end. And while we're here at the Ivy League, maybe we're not playing against those big schools, but we all can end up in the same place. So I need all the alums, the deep pockets to understand that this can be a decorated place like it was yesteryear. Don't forget, the Ivy League started football in America. The Ivy League started mm. all this and made a conscious decision to prioritize its academics over its athletics, thus the decline in its athletics. But I'm not just talking to the alumni, I'm talking to the players as well. And I've been saying this and saying this. And I remember I was at Crenshaw High School and if you guys remember DeAnthony Thomas, Black Mamba, I remember meeting him when he was a junior, I guess. And I'm sitting there and I said, who's the man on this team? And everyone pointed at DeAnthony and he just looked down like, I don't even want to be that guy that's bragging like that. And I said, DeAnthony, where are you looking? And he told me the school's SC, Oregon, et cetera. He ends up going to Oregon. And I said, I'm not here to negative recruit anyone. I'm just going to tell you, if you go to Columbia, if you go to an Ivy League school, you will understand what being a big fish in a little pond really is. And you'll be able to have not only one school's fan base, the entire league of eight great institutions as a fan base to propel you. But the players didn't let it sit in. They didn't let that become their mindset. So guys don't leverage the Ivy League like they should versus big schools. But to your proposal, if they had a collective with all the money in the Ivy League, and then you leverage that against Alabama, oh, now we're going to start seeing those M's turn to B's. Uh, you know what? I, I like that. I want to uh, counter just a bit. The uh, only thing that you like more than your favorite thing is more of your favorite thing. Like, totally okay. get it. 
Now your argument, I, I'm going to concede part of your argument. And I'm gonna say, all right, maybe Johnny Manziel still leaves Texas A&M. Although I don't agree with it, I'll concede it. Fine. But the Cavender twins, already we asked them, you guys gonna go to the WNBA? And they said, no. Because they, they're making more money at school and they're not going to the WNBA. They're just gonna stick around and start their own show, create their own brand, create whatever it is that they want. My point is that the favorite thing, if it, if it is money, there are only 1,800, you just said it, only 1,800 guys in the NFL. Let's look at all of professional athletes at, the, at uh, in women's sport and men's sport. I think there are gonna be a lot of college kids who stay in college rather than bouncing because they're making so much money now. I do think that happens the next year or two. Arguing saying we were fast forwarding that Johnny Manziel would stay, maybe that is too big of a leap, a bridge too far, but I think there's the vast majority of people are not Marcellus Wiley and other superstars. Oh man, I, I heard you concede a point or two to me. You should have <laughs> just right. threw in the towel. You should have just <laughs> threw in the towel. You should have just walked off the field and said, you know what? It's not our day. And then right, burn the ahead. film. Don't even watch don't. this. Let me tell you why. Now, Go God, I love to tell the real of real, but I always protect the guilty. So I can't say this person's <laughs> name because I don't have their permission. But trust right. me, I will call her and then find out next time I tell the story if I can say her name. But she's big time in the WNBA right now. Most of the big time players in the WNBA all have to have a second basketball job. That's why so many of them play overseas. Now, I was talking to this future Hall of Famer in the WNBA, and she hated the WNBA experience economically. She was like, I don't make enough money where I can just sit still in the off season, take care of my family, hang with my kids. I have to trek in the off season of the WNBA to go make my real money overseas. Now from the outside, that looks amazing. Oh my God, you get to see the world and play ball. And I don't get to live and I don't get to rest and I don't get to chill with those who I love most consistently. So in this conversation, the end justifies the means because the twins know there's no greater end than what they're living in right now. And they talk to the, the MB, WNBA players. They talk to them when they come back to school. They know the real, not what's projected in the media. Oh, you're playing pro basketball, BS. They know that right now the money that they're making is pro basketball money, better than those who are playing pro basketball. So. As a father of three girls, I've had this conversation thousands of times. If your kids can play a sport, what sport would they play? And immediately we eliminate basketball, unless you just want them to go to college and get a scholarship and just say, okay, it's gonna be tough sledding after that. You eliminate volleyball. You're like, there's no real pro circuit for you. And then you try to prop up tennis. You try to prop up uh, uh, golf. That's it. Like, it's sad, but it's real. So let's keep it real. They're staying in school because they already know this is the best. This is the ER. I am making more. I am having more fun here. I am making the most money here. If they go to the WNBA, the ER will be lesser. It would not be as great as it is where they are right now. I like the way that you, uh, you put that. I think we're arguing the same thing though, but I, I you know what? I'm gonna concede, I'm gonna, listen, I'm gonna throw in the towel, and you wanna know why? Poorly phrased what? by John Brankis. Just a poorly constructed argument, and that's what happens when you, when you debate somebody from the Ivy League. I, I didn't go to an Ivy League school, although I did go to the University of Virginia. And so, oh. it wasn't an Ivy right. League, but it was close. But that's what happened, so I lose just by the mere fact that I poorly constructed my argument. Uh, Marcellus. I promise you that I want to keep you forever because uh, we could go on and on and on. On the NIL house, I want you to give us parting words about the state of NIL right now and what happens three years out. What happens? Yeah, I think it's being termed right now as the wild, wild west 
with a negative connotation. I really want to highlight how positive it is to be in the wild, wild west. That's the land of discovery. That's when you can plant your flag somewhere. That's when you can feel the riches of discovery and foundation and ownership. Like, these young kids are owning their experience and they need to be fully supported. Oh, what if they blow it off? Uh, first of all, in America, the average age of a millionaire is 57 years old. Guess what? Most people either blow it all or don't even get to it all until they're 57. So to let these kids be on that accelerated course at 18 or even younger is amazing. If there's one caveat I would add, one addendum, is to make it a national conversation of annuity in support of all of this financial success they're having. Which means, hey, I'm not taking your money away. I'm putting it to the side. Uh, some percentage, you opt in. Almost make it where it's a built-in mechanism so the kids can protect themselves from themselves. Why? I don't care how astute you are financially. I don't care how advanced you are. That youth is wasted on the young. And you're gonna spend unnecessary amounts of money learning how to play and use money. So that's the only thing. Other than that, let these kids live. I, I end with this story. I was at Columbia junior year, and I'm not the man to the world, but on campus, I'm the man. They know like Marcellus is good. He may go to the NFL, but the NFL was like, who? Marcellus, who? I ain't never heard of him. So I'm at that threshold, right? And Lauren Hill, the singer, the Fugees, was at my school and was in my class and was my homie. And we used to freestyle against each other. Damn, we didn't have social media. We didn't have camera phones. I have none of this recorded, but all true stories. So here's the thing. <laughs> She used to show up in class, show up in class, and then she's like, Marcellus, I'm gonna be gone for a few weeks. Gotta film this movie, Sister Act, whatever it may be. Marcellus, I'll be back. Uh, I gotta go and do this album, Fuji's. And I used to sit there fuming in jealousy because she was allowed to capitalize on her talents in that moment. Meanwhile, I couldn't enter the draft even if I was good enough to enter the draft. And that used to just sit with me all the time. Like, why am I being held back? And why am I not allowed the opportunity and to capitalize on the talents I have now? I don't know tomorrow. So the NIL, for many a reasons, strikes home with not only me as a player, but me as a person understanding you're finally giving us an opportunity to have true ownership of our talents. Wow. Uh, well said. I mean, uh, mic drop, that boom, that's out. Uh, everybody, make sure you follow Marcellus Wiley on social media. Marcellus, thank you so much for uh, joining us. This is, uh, it's truly, we, we are breaking new ground with the NIL house and we're honored to have you on as, uh, as a guest. Great uh, stuff, Marcellus. Thank you, Rob, Thanks, man. thank you, John, and you guys know you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Wink, yes, wink. we will. We will. <laughs> Love it. Teaser. Just teasing. My man. Just teasing. <laughs>
Uh, let's uh, pull a picture of who this is week's our winners. mascot. Oh my God! Oh, how did this happen? Those are your dogs! Those are my dogs. I can't believe it because this week the submissions were down oh so slightly from 2.4 million to 1.76 million. That's right. And yet, yeah. Welly and Gigi, Welly, a dachshund, and Gigi, we're not 100% sure what she is. They're right. both rescue dogs. Yeah. And these dogs won it. It's, it's pretty amazing. The criteria is super stringent. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, one thing is that I've actually known Welly and Gigi for some time now. They're actually not dogs. They are squirrels dressed up as dogs. They are <laughs> they are similar in size to squirrels. They don't have that bushy tail, no, but we removed but that long ago. It's a costume they have on. They're 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 dressing as dogs. That's those are two squirrels. Though. And but listen, don't underestimate squirrels. They're I mean they can be cute. Welly and Gigi also lovers <laughs> of Brutus Bone Broth. Yes, they are. They're lovers. They That's love right. Brutus Bone Broth. They got multiple flavors, yeah. beef, chicken. They got it all, and they just they love the stuff. They do. Uh, all right, well, we're very grateful for the Mascots of the Week, sponsored by the one and only Brutus Bone Broth. Make sure you go to BrutusBroth.com. Yes, that is a plug for Brutus Bone Broth. They're a sponsor uh, of the NIL house. Uh, so, Rob Vaca, closing thoughts. What do you got? This was an awesome episode. Now I'm starved. I'm starving. Uh, it's uh, got to eat gonna, something. You're gonna go grab yourself some onions. I am gonna grab onions. Yep. I'm gonna grab. I had a Reese's peanut butter cup. Yep. And I, of course, have underwear already. That's right. So probably just need the onions. I. You know what I like? Sacks. Sacks. A X X. I like it because now why did they not spell it S A X X? Ooh. Baller. Oh, that would have been baller. Never say never. Never say never. You know, maybe they, maybe they will. Maybe that, that'll be like their extra, you know, for the, right. the roomy men. <laughs> <laughs> roomy. All right, it's going to do it. Uh, let's cue up our band and get out of here. Make sure everybody goes to uh, the NILhouse.com and follow us on social. Spread the word. Um, the show is amazing, and we can't thank Cardale Jones, Marcellus Wiley. And next week, we're just going to keep raising the bar. That's what we Have do. a massive week, everybody.